A critical part of cognition is the ability to express your thoughts verbally in a way that results in a hearer experiencing thoughts which have a behavioural meaning that approximates to the behavioural meaning of the thoughts to the speaker. And these can be very complex behavioural meanings. I'll start by briefly running through the relatively simple example that we've talked about a number of times before, how hearing a noun can acquire the ability to create meaning. This is familiar territory because it's what we've discussed under semantic memory a number of times. The cortical column activity in a specific visual area and a specific auditory area over a range of experiences when different objects of a particular category are seen, and at the same time the name of the category is heard, reveal some patterns in the two areas. Although different groups of columns are active during each, experiences, each experience, some visual columns are active relatively often, and some auditory columns are also active relatively often, as I've shown by the green arrows, meaning that there's a group of visual columns often active at the same time as a group of auditory columns. And this pattern of activity can be exploited because the activity of the group of auditory columns that have often been active at the same time in the past, such as those often activated by hearing the word bird, can drive detections of specific receptive fields in the inferior temporal cortex. And those inferior temporal cortex columns have recommendation strengths in favour of indirect activation of visual columns that have often been active when the inferior temporal columns themselves were active. In other words, in this case, when seeing a bird. So hearing the name of an object category can result in activation of an appropriate pseudo-image, although without the receptive field detections close to visual inputs that will be present for an actual perception. And similarly, seeing an actual visual object can result in activation of columns as if the corresponding word was being heard. But again, without the activity of auditory columns very close to sensory inputs that will be activated by an actual auditory experience. So there's these reciprocal indirect activation strengths on the basis of frequent simultaneous past activity. And of course, many of the indirectly activated columns have recommendation strengths in favour of behaviours relevant to the presence of a, an instance of the category. As I mentioned, neither direction results in a sensory hallucination. You don't feel as though you're physically looking at an object when you hear the word, and you don't feel as though you're physically hearing sounds when you look at the object. So in terms of this relatively simple cortical model, we can model the understanding of nouns by this reciprocal activation route. And we can actually develop an initial understanding of verbs with the same kind of model. But as we'll see, we'll need a more complex cortical model to understand syntax, and in fact we'll actually need that more complex model even to adequately understand verbs. And this more complex model uh, I'll come to later in the lecture, and it requires additional levels of receptive field complexity. And these additional levels discriminate between circumstances intermediate between features, objects, and groups of objects. We'll come back to this more complex model later, but for the moment, to develop an initial understanding of verbs, we'll use the simpler model that we've used before. So let's suppose this cortex gets sensory input derived from a visual image. And this visual image is a chase scene, like the one illustrated. That scene will result in detection of receptive fields at multiple levels of complexity, up to, say, the group of objects level, or even beyond. Then suppose further that the word chase is heard while viewing the scene. So auditory columns will also be activated. If lots of different chase scenes were viewed at different times, and every time the word was also heard, then each time there'll be different populations of columns activated in all the areas, but as in the case of object names, there could be a group of auditory columns that are often active at similar times to a group of visual columns. 
But in this case, because the similarity between the scenes is mostly in the relative arrangement of the objects, the frequently active visual columns will tend to be at a higher level of receptive field complexity, say, the group of objects level. So when the word is heard, there'll be an activation at this group of objects level, but with relatively few column activations closer to visual input, even in the object's discrimination level. So the subjective experience resulted from hearing the word chase will be like watching something vague chasing something vague. I'll mention at this point that there could be enough similarities in body appearance when something is chasing or when something's being chased to result in a few columns being activated at the discriminates objects level. But I'll leave that aside for the moment. It's a point I'll return to later. Consider now the sequence of events when the words dog, chased, cat are heard. The auditory columns directly activated by hearing the word dog indirectly activate visual columns at the discriminates objects level on the basis of frequent past simultaneous activity. The activity in these columns will have a frequency modulation at a specific phase, and I've indicated the phase by the pink coloration. The activity of these dog visual columns is prolonged, and columns are then indirectly activated in the discriminates group of objects area by auditory columns directly activated by hearing the word chaste. And again, the activity of these chaste columns is frequency modulated at a specific phase, different from the phase of the dog visual column outputs, indicated by red rather than pink. So at this point, there's going to be minimal interaction between the two column populations. The activity of both of these column populations is prolonged, the word cat is heard, and hearing the word indirectly activates a third population at a third frequency modulation phase in the discriminate objects area. At this point, there's no interaction between the dog, cat, and chase visual column populations. The next step is that other receptive field detections, perhaps within the presence of a pause at the end of the three words, have recommendation strengths in favor of bringing the outputs from the visual dog and cat columns into the same modulation phase at the input level to the groups of objects area. And that modulation phase is the same as the phase of the existing population at the groups of objects level. So now there'll be interaction between all the populations. And that will drive activation of a larger integrated column population at the discriminates groups of objects level. And this overall population will be similar to the one that will be activated if the brain was actually looking at a dog chasing a cat. Except there won't be receptive field detections close to sensory inputs. But the activated columns will have recommendation strengths in favour of many of the behaviours appropriate to the presence of a chasing. So that provides some understanding at this simple model level. But let me point out a problem with the description so far. It's not clear in this model how dog chased cat would be distinguished from cat chased dog. And resolving this problem requires the rather more complex cortical model I mentioned earlier. But at this point, I'll just mention the problem can be resolved and continue a bit further with the simple model. With the simple model, Think about how a verbal description of an imaginary situation would be handled, like a, a rabbit chasing a giraffe. Just as before, visual column populations would be activated in various visual areas in response to the three words at different phases of frequency modulation to prevent interaction until all three populations are present. And once the three populations have been established, synchronization and release of the rabbit and giraffe populations to the group of objects area would occur. That will drive an enhanced population at the group of objects level. But because nothing like a rabbit chasing a giraffe has ever actually been seen, the number of columns detecting their receptive fields at the group of objects level 
will be lower than the required minimum. So there's going to be receptor field expansions to increase the number of detections. And the subjective experience will now be as if looking at a rabbit chasing a giraffe, although again without the receptive field detections close to visual inputs. And as I mentioned in an earlier section, the receptive field expansions provide a basis for recalling the imaginary scene in the future. So now we'll go on to look at somewhat more complex sentences and how the more complex sentences can be understood in the next section.